Hey, what's up guys? Chip Waters here, and I'm excited to share with you something very interesting. As many of you may know, previously I used SketchUp among many other 3D applications, and one of the things I really missed after switching to Blender is the ability to do very quick line drawing renderings. So, why line drawings, you might ask? Well, the fact is, when I present my designs and concepts to clients, I always prefer to present them using line drawings and not finished photoreal renderings. And the reason for this is that when my clients see the line drawn images, they understand the design is not yet a completed finished product. Plus, I also have the added benefit of not having to set up materials and do all the lighting and tweaking to create photoreal images. That comes later. So what I'm excited to share with you today is our new add-on called Sketch Style. And if you're a lover of that SketchUp look, then you'll really get into this. So what is Sketch Style? Sketch Style is a Blender 2.8 and 2.81 add-on which gives you a quick workflow to create ambient occlusion, clay, and sketch type renderings, very much like what you see in SketchUp or other non-photoreal renderers. There are three significant parts of this add-on which make it different from any other available. First, the workflow is streamlined. Setup is fast. You basically press a single button and bam, you're ready to render. All the materials in your objects have just been overridden by the sketch style material. Second, you can quickly toggle back and forth between your current photoreal scene and your sketch style scene. No need to reassign materials or adjust render settings. And third, you have the ability to selectively assign your photoreal materials to your sketch style scene. This means transparent objects like glass, emissive lights, reflective mirrors, and even decals can now be rendered with the override materials and sketch style. We have created our own override system which allows for keeping different sets of materials when rendering sketch style versus rendering your original scene. And finally, sketch style has a number of easy to use controls to tweak the final look of your renderer. And as a bonus, sketch style comes with a bunch of presets and you have the ability to create, save, and load your own presets. So who is this add-on for? Well, sketch style is targeted at concept artists product designers and architects who like the look of line drawings and SketchUp renderers. So why create this add-on? While Blender is capable of creating advanced freestyle renders, the interface for doing so can be quite confusing, not to mention the fact that it's most difficult to toggle back and forth between a photoreal render setup and a freestyle one. This add-on focuses on creating a fast workflow to make this process as simple as possible. So how does it work? Well, let's take a quick tour. Here we have a scene as you can see, it's a, a little kid ops created scene. We just uh, added a few cutters in here and added the screen. And I'm gonna go over to the sketch mode here. Here's a sketch style render plugin. And we're gonna actually click on Eevee. So we have the Eevee scene. I'm gonna actually go over here and, and I will turn off some lights that I don't need. And now you can see I have this background. Now I'm gonna use the default settings here and I'll just hit the F12 key. And there we have our render. And as you can see, it rendered pretty fast, but one of the problems is that we don't have our logo and we don't have the, the blue color on the front. So let's go ahead and close that off. Let's just click on this object right here and let's hit materials for the override. And we'll click on this one here and we'll hit the materials for the override now. And let's take a look at it. So you can see now we have a much better image. We've got this color here with materials on it, we've got our rendering and everything. So that's why we would wanna use the materials for the override. Okay, so let's load a new preset. And there's a couple ways of doing that. One, I can use a load button down here, but I actually prefer to do it this way so I can show you what's going on. Up here, we have two scenes, a sketch style scene and a regular scene. So I'm gonna take this sketch style scene, I'm gonna delete it. Now we're back in our regular scene and then I'll hit this load button and I'll go to my add-ons folder. And in my add-ons folder, I have sketch style working, sketch style, and in here I have a bunch of settings. So this sketch style blueprint is the first one. And in fact, what I'll do is I'm gonna do the sketch style hidden line, which is a blueprint with a hidden line. So let's load that setting. And now that we're done, I wanna make sure I'm rendering in Eevee mode and I will hit the F12 key. And there we have our render. You can see that it actually puts a dashed line in all of the hidden lines. Okay, so I wanna go back to my original default settings. And if I hit the reset all, it's gonna reset to the original blueprint settings. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna go over here again, delete this scene, and 
hit the sketch button. Now we have our original default settings. Sometimes you may find that actually Cycles renders faster than Eevee. In some instances, when you have lots of objects in polygons, you may find that Cycles may actually render faster. But for the most part, Eevee seems to do a better job, especially in terms of getting rid of the noise. But let's go ahead and render a quick Cycles rendering just to show you how that works. Here's the samples, the number of samples that we're going to use to render. 20 is usually pretty good, but if you're rendering an interior, you may have to go significantly higher. We might want to use denoising. Uh, this is the actual Blender 2.8 denoising, not the fancy one in 2.81. So that's what that is, but we probably want to use that. And a lot of times when we are creating line widths, we will want to click this view map cache because it'll actually create faster renders for us. But anytime we're doing our final render, we probably want to turn that off. Now. While we're here, let's go ahead and change the background color. So I'm going to change the background color to something like this. Let's change the material override color. And I can actually go here and gra grab this, and that's going to give us that, but it's not matching. So the way I can match it is I can actually click over here on this background color. I just click there, and now we've got a pretty good match when this thing finally renders. The next thing I want to look at is how thick my lines. I've got three different lines. I've got edge mark lines, which are used when you mark the edges. So if you are in this object and you hit the tab key and you hit set an edge like this one right here and control E and you can say mark freestyle edge. And by doing that, it's going to change this. So that that edge, we're going to make that a bright red edge so that you can see that that was marked. And we'll make the heavy black outline, which is the outline that goes around it. I'm going to make that about four pixels and then we'll leave the thickness of the thin alone and the outline let's go ahead and make that one let's just give that a nice blue color as a heavy black outline so let's go ahead and render this i'm going to use the gpu settings make sure i do that quickly sometimes i also might want to go in here and under my performance check the tiles to be 256 each i've got two gpus in here so that'll run pretty fast now that i'm here i'll hit f12 and we'll see this render so this is the rendering with, as I mentioned, 20 sample settings. And there's a final render. Now notice that we have an alpha set on this. So these are somewhat transparent lines. So are these in here. That's why even though they're black, they look blue. And here is our red line at the top, which was the one that we edge marked. So that should explain some of what's going on. So now I've reset all and I'm back in my default settings. And I'm going to actually use a red line to render. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to turn off my edge mark. And I'm going to change the thickness to 2. And I'm going to come in here and I will grab a red color. And then while my mouse is over this red area, I don't press the mouse button down at all. But I command C to copy that. And then I can command V to paste it right there. So that'll work good. Now the other thing I'm going to want to do is I'm going to change the brightness. It's a little darker in here so I'll change it to 0.7 and I want the actual brightness color I want to add just a little bit of blue in here just give me a little bit of blue something like that and the background color I will use that same trick we tried before and then I'll hit F12 and it renders almost instantaneously and there you have it. So I've deleted the sketch style scene. I'm going to load another setting, the squiggly blend setting. I'm going to load that and I will go to the EV to render it. I'm going to leave it as it is, but I want to add a little more ambient. So if you look at, let's go ahead and override that so we can see. If you look at this right here, you'll see that our material is sketch style. My ambient distance right here will give me more ambient, but that only works in cycles. If I want to actually pump up the ambient here inside of Eevee, I'll need to go to the Eevee settings over here. Here's ambient occlusion. So I just basically have to jack up this factor. So something like three, and now you're starting to see it's, it's getting a lot darker. Maybe I can move it down a little bit more, but this is how you adjust the ambient in Eevee. And before we do another render here, let's change the alphas to one. And what that really means, I don't need the edge mark on this one. What that really means is that now the lines are going to be a solid color and not transparent. So if I hit the F12 button now and render, again, it's really fast. And you can see now that we have this very squiggly outline that 
covers this quite well. Well, that about covers it as far as a quick intro into the Sketch Style Blender 2.8 add-on. If you're interested in learning more, look in the description of this video and you'll find links to this add-on at Blender Market and at Gumroad. Thanks for watching. See you online. Bye.